Joy Prime, the ultimate experience. Good afternoon, sir. You should have three oaths in your file. The oath of allegiance, the official oath, and the oath of secrecy. We'll begin with the oath of allegiance, then the official oath, and then finally the oath of secrecy. You'll insert your name where appropriate and say after me. I do in the name of the almighty God swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Ghana as by law established. That I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of Ghana And that, and that I will preserve, protect, protect and, defend and defend the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. Of Republic of Ghana. So, help so help me God. Your official oath. Yes, your oath. I, I your do in the name of the Almighty God swear, the of the God swear. that I will at all times well and truly serve the Republic of Ghana in the Office of Inspector General of Police and that I will uphold, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana as by law established. So help me God. And finally, the oath of secrecy. I, holding the office of Inspector General of Police, do in the name of the Almighty God swear that I will not directly or indirectly communicate or reveal to any person any matter which shall be brought under my consideration or shall come to my knowledge in the discharge of my official duties except as may be required for the discharge of my official duties or as may be specially permitted by law. So help me God. Thank you, Mr. President. May I again respectfully invite Mr. President to present the instrument of appointment to the Inspector General of Police. One with other marks, please. Thank you very much. A round of applause. To the <laughs> the Inspector General of Police may now proceed to the table to sign the oath book.
Thank you very much. Mr. President, please sign this portion of the oath book. Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the pleasure to invite the President of the Republic to deliver his remarks. <coughs> Eminent clergy, including the parish priest of Jubilee House, Reverend Canon Lamte, Vice President, Chairperson and members of the Council of State, Chief of Staff at the Office of the President and officials of the Presidency, Minister for National Security, Minister for Defense, Attorney General and Minister for Justice, Ministers, Deputy Ministers of State, newly sworn Inspector General of Police, Chief of Defense Staff of the Armed Forces, the Controller General of the Immigration Service, the Acting Director General of the Prison Service, Commissioners of Police and Senior Police Officers, Chairperson of the New Patriotic Party, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome all of you to Jubilee House, the seat of our nation's presidency. We are met here this afternoon to perform an important act in the life of the nation the adduction into office of a new Inspector General of Police. This is the first time since I became president on 7th January 2017 that a formal occasion has been created to swear into the office the head of our country's police service. There's been a simple, solemn ceremony of investiture. And to that end, I'm grateful for the presence of all of you. On Wednesday, 21st July, I requested the then Inspector General of Police, Mr. James Opombueno, to embark on terminal leave with effect from Sunday, the 1st of August, 2021, pending his retirement from the police service yesterday, on Thursday, 7th October, 2021. In furtherance of this, I indicated that until a substantive IGP was appointed, Commissioner of Police, Dr. George Akufu Dampari, the next in command, was to serve as acting IGP. It has been an eventful two months since his appointment, and the acting IGP has left me with very little choice in the matter. His actions, which have received widespread support and acclaim from the population, vindicated the decision I made to entrust him with a mandate of heading the police, albeit in a temporary capacity. It was thus with no de degree of difficulty that I informed the Council of State of my decision to make his appointment a permanent one, subject to consultation with the Council, pursuant to Article 202, Clause 1 of the Constitution of the Republic. On Friday, 1st October 2021, I received a communication from the Council informing me of the positive outcome of its consultation. Consequently, I swore in COP Dr. George Kufu Dampari a few minutes ago as our nation's 23rd Inspector General of Police. I congratulate Dr. George Kufu Dampari warmly on his appointment, and with no hesitation, 
say that it is a well-deserved one. He has risen through the ranks of the police service, starting off as a constable, and has served his nation dutifully. Today, he has reached the pinnacle of his career and will serve for the next four years as Inspector General of Police. He has demonstrated that he will be an effective leader of the police service and will help foster its efficiency. He will be walking in the footsteps of the 22 previous occupants of the office. And I have no doubt that in Dr. George Akufu Dampare, we have a worthy successor to Mr. James Opong Opuenu, and indeed, the others who have gone before him. I must, at this point, pay fulsome tribute to Mr. James Opong Opuenu for his distinguished service to the police service and our nation, especially for the calm, professional manner in which he led the operations of the police to assure the peace and stability of the country during last December's presidential and parliamentary elections, a period of considerable sensitivity for the unity and welfare of the Republic. He has my lifelong respect, and I wish him a well-earned retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, the most important things for our nation are its peace, the safety of its people, and the preservation of its territorial integrity. It is when these are guaranteed that citizens can go about their normal lives in security and hope to improve on the quality of their circumstances. We all sleep feeling safe when the men and women of the police service work to keep our communities and our streets safe. Newly sworn IGP, the issue of law and order is particularly germane at this time, when the traditional challenges to security, such as chieftaincy conflicts, land disputes, religious intolerance, ethnic animosities, and political rivalry are being compounded by contemporary threats like drug and human trafficking, proliferation of small arms and light weapons, armed robberies, cyber crimes, and activities of nomadic herdsmen. That is why government is working to modernize and resource the police service adequately in order to assist it to maintain law and order and protect lives and property. I assure you, the government is determined to give whatever support it can so that we can have the service that the people of Ghana deserve. The Constitution has in Article 202, Clause 2, designated the IGP as the head of the police service and subject to the provisions of the Constitution and to the control and direction of the police council responsible, and I quote, for the operational control and the administration of the police service, unquote. As I indicated last week, at the graduation ceremony of the 50th Cadet Corps Officers Course of the Police Service. Government has put in place far-reaching measures to improve the quality of the police service and the welfare of police personnel, and we will continue to do more in the coming years. It is often said that the public is the police and the police is the public. The citizenry can only have confidence in the police service when its members are seen to be honest and enforce the law without fear or favor. Your task as IGP during your term of office is to establish a service that maintains the trust of the citizenry. It is in everybody's interest that the police service conducts itself as the principal creditable instrument of accomplishing the executive's duty of maintaining law and order in the state. Governments in our body politic have term limits, and in a multi-party democracy, parties win 
and lose power. It is good for the health of the nation that this should be so. And this is why the police service under your leadership should not tie its well-being or otherwise to the fortunes of the ruling party of the day. As president, and together with you as Inspector General of Police, we need to cooperate to ensure that the police service is left to focus on its core mandate and not be an appendage of the ruling party. I envisage the development of a police service that goes about its function of protecting ordinary citizens confident that there will be no interference from the powers that be. Newly sworn IGP, I believe strongly that in you, we can help promote the development of a nation governed by the rule of law and respect for human rights, with the police being at the front line of this endeavor. The police has the primary responsibility of maintaining peace and keeping law and order in our country and government will do its best to assist you in the police service, discharge this effectively. May God bless the new Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Akufu Dampare, and us all. And may God bless our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. We thank Mr. President for his very instructive re remarks. It's now my pleasure to invite the Inspector General of Police to respond to Mr. President's remarks. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Nana, Chairman of Council of States, Honorable Members of the Council of State, Madam Chief of Staff, Service Commanders, the clergy, my colleague, former members, commissioners, and other heads of security agencies here present, Honorable Ministers of State, distinguished invited guests, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to profoundly thank His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Adu Dankwa Akufuadu, for the honor done me by appointing me as the Acting Inspector General of Police and today confirming me as the 23rd Substantive Inspector General of Police of our country. Mr. President, my family and I are most grateful to you for the confidence that you have in, that, in me to allow me to take such a position of service to our nation. I also would like to thank Mr. Vice President, for his leadership of the Police Council and his personal support and encouragement to me over the years. And I know I will continue to count on him in this regard. Equally, I would like to thank Nana Chairman of the Council of State for mentoring me over the years and other members of the Council for taking a critical look at the request of His Excellency to consider me for this position and giving your support to it. I'm most grateful. I also would like to thank my mother, the Chief of Staff, for her motherly care and support at all times, which has deepened since my appointment as the Acting Inspector General of Police. And I know now that I'm in that capacity as a substantive Inspector General of Police, more of such mother love will be extended to me for me to have the peace of mind to work together with my colleagues to keep the peace of this country. I, at the same time, also would like to thank my sector minister, 
school for another very important assignment. He's not here with us today. For the cooperation, the support that he has given me over the years before even I became the acting inspector general of police. And when I also became inspe acting inspector general of police, he has continued and even done more. And I know that now that I'm in the position, he will probably do three to four times what he has been doing for me. And I'm grateful to him. And I'm also very grateful to my colleagues at the service commander's level, including my big brother, the chief of defense staff, for all the support I've received since my appointment as the acting inspector general of police. And coming to a point that we've seen that the only weapon to defeating and fighting crime is when we work together. And I hope we'll continue to do that in the interest of this country. And I also would like to thank my colleagues, POMA members, the commissioners who are here, and those who are not here today, and the entire police force for the outpour of love, support, understanding accorded me since I joined the service to today, and even expanding it upon my assumption of office as the acting inspector general of police. And if I have been able to do anything, it is because of that support that you've given me. So colleagues at POMAP and the entire police force, I want to say thank you very much. And as we have always been saying, we are in this together. And when we are in it together and we do it together, the results beats people's imagination. So I hope we we'll continue to stay together as a family and pursue all the things that we need to pursue in order to bring peace and tranquility to our dear nation, Ghana. Mr. President, you've actually set the space for us in terms of what we're supposed to do. And I want to give you the assurance that working in concept with my colleagues at, within the police service and outside it, and also getting the support and the backing of the population of the country, we will be able to leave the police service better than we came to find it. So at the end of the day, if we leave the service and we are passing by and we see police people doing an excellent job, we will be proud and tell ourselves within, without anybody hearing that yet, yes, we also contributed. And as a result of that, we are seeing a different police service. And our vision has been to become a world-class police institution. And Mr. President, we are poised, we are focused in attaining that. We know it is not going to be easy. By my colleagues and I, we have made our mind that even if we are unable to take it to that destination, we, at this time, will position the organization towards that destination such that there will be no turning back. And I know it is doable, because anything that we put our mind to, your heart to, and you stay focused on it, it will, definitely come to, it will definitely come to pass. So our focus is to make sure that over the years, so soon into the future, we'll become the most respected organization in the country and a reference point for Africa and beyond. Because we know that if we succeed in doing that, then at the end of the day, we'll get our respect back as an institution, the trust and confidence of the people will, get, will come back to us in a force that will help us to deepen our legitimacy. And it is something that we are proud of if we are able to achieve. And Mr. President, finally, I would like to say that we know that as police officers and other security agencies, we happen to be one of the few who become civilians twice in our lives. Before joining the service, we are civilians, and at a retirement, we will become civilians. So our focus is that the police service we are nurturing today will be the police service that will police us and our children and our family when we come back into retirement. And knowing the privileges that we enjoy as officers now, if we are unable to institute a police system that will police us better than what is currently being done, then we will be the losers. So whatever we do today in terms of making the police service better, we do it for ourselves. And Mr. President, working in concept, in partnership, and in unity with my colleagues at all levels within the organization, we can assure you that we'll stick to it and achieve it to make you proud, to make the people of this country proud, to make our families proud, 
and make ourselves also proud. So Mr. President, once again, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving me such a rare privilege to serve my country in this capacity. And I want to assure you that I came into service with humility, with integrity, and with understanding that when we are all in it together, the result is better. Mr. President, I thank you for the opportunity once again. Thank you, sir. We thank the Inspector General of Police for his pledge to continue to deliver excellent service in the interest of our nation. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, all too soon we're coming to the end of this very solemn and impressive ceremony. And uh, it's my pleasure once again to invite Reverend Canon Samuel Lante to lead us in the closing prayer. Please let us bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you because you are the beginning and the end. You prompt our actions with your help and complete them with your blessings. May the swearing in of the Inspector General of Police energize him to pursue excellence, justice, and dedication to duty. May Saint Michael, the glorious archangel and standard bearer, the patron saint of the police, fan the flame of the gifts you have given him and reveal your grace and truth to him each day. We beseech you, dear Father, to send us out of here in the power of your Holy Spirit and further us with your continual help so that in all our work began continued and ended in you we may glorify your holy name joy prime the ultimate experience